Bajaj Consumer Care's quarterly result reflects a sequential improvement for both rural growth and the margins. While the management seems assured of its ability to maintain gross margin, its product diversification strategy remains a factor that deserves a close watch for the investors. Let's do a three-point analysis of the Q4 numbers and the outlook on the company. 1. What are the key positives in Q4 earnings? Well, if you see Q4 FI19 sales growth of 11% was aided by volume and pricing growth. Volume growth of 5.5% was in line with expectations. Flagship Almond Drops Hair Oil witnessed a reasonable 7.4% volume growth. Now, domestic markets saw a steady performance wherein rural demand growth remained ahead of the urban demand. Now, 2. What are the key concerns and the observations? Sales through canteen stores departments or the CST channels remains a sore point. There was a degrowth of over 15% this quarter in contrast to 35% sales growth seen in Q3 FY19, which underlines uncertainties with respect to government policies on canteen stores. Now, excluding CST, volume growth for the company was 7% year on year. Now there remains a case for weaker performance of other hair oil categories. Supply chain feedback on Coco Jasmine has not been as per the management's expectations as well. Now over the last two and a half years, the company has lowered wholesale channel contribution to 33% from 60% due to part impact of GST implementation. There is an uptick in the product diversification. It recently launched products for sunscreen and cooling oil categories as well. However, an overhaul of company's existing hair oil business is definitely on the cards, for which the management has also mandated consulting firm Bain & Company. Now, it might take at least six months to receive initial recommendations from the consultations as well. Three, what's the outlook on the company? Well, competitive intensity and limited portfolio range remains the key constraint for the company. Steady performance of its flagship product and improved growth in the hinterland is definitely a positive for sure. There is an apparent recovery in international sales, but it needs to be watched very, very closely. Now, there has been an uptick in raw material prices as well for the company, which has prompted the management to actually implement a price hike for Q1 FY20 as well. The gross margin is likely to remain stable in the near term. Now, the stock has corrected by 37% from its 52 weeks high as well and is currently trading at 18.6 times FY20 estimated earnings. Now, this makes it among the cheapest FMCG stocks available in the market. Now, expect the stock to also trade at a discount to the median trading multiple of the FMCG sector.